I think I actually went live. I think I think we are live. Yeah, that's right. I'm three minutes early. Because last week I was like a minute late or two minutes late. You know, well, our average is. Can you hear me? Am I spilling my coffee on myself? No. Mm. That is delicious. Or as the Spanish say, delicioso. What's up, Retro Puffer? Strat CPO, Vimp, Sky Prop, Joe. I think I saw Ben Coombs, Ricky, Papa Blue, Baseless Ball, Deanna Fisher, Ron Padgett, Claypot, Ricky Compton. Of course, we got Red Out, Sky Prop, Coots, Rob, Gary. We got Tony. We got Numinator. We got Mike. We got Wendell. We got Blackjack Guitar. We got Ed Axon. We got Terry 3G. Everything sound okay? Yeah, voice sound okay? Guitar sound okay? What's up, FJB? Majestic BB and J-Cat. We got Kevin. I feel like my voice is off a little bit here. Hold on. Hold on. I'm checking me levels. I don't like it. Hold on. Let me check. It feels like... Check, check, check. One, two. Hold on. I, I can just... My spidey sense is telling me. I've, I've, I've been doing this long enough. I'm, t I'm, t I'm telling you, damn it. I'm telling you there's something wrong here. Hold on. Check. One, two. One, three, yeah, there it is. There it is. Good. All right. All right. Crisis averted. Check, check. Yeah, that's that's more like it. I could tell. It, it doesn't sound right, damn it. <laughs> that's that's the pro I am. What's up, Surf B? Oh, sounds amazing. I sound good too. Okay. Sound all right? You can hear me okay? YouTube is asking me to insert an ad and they won't look, say, I gotta close this. Will you leave me alone? What's up, Fretless Ed? Yeah, this guitar does sound good. I like the sound of this one. I like these pickups. Sibilance, sibilance. It's up right, let's say. We got Tim Thomas, TRW. Amazing guitar guy. Yeah, mm, she's got a blow. Am I in tune? Close enough. This guitar smells fine. This guitar smells like success. Well, the thing is, what's so funny is, is the ad, ad, ad already, see, that's an ad that starts at a, that's like a pre-roll ad right before I even start, before you even get my video. They want me to do one in addition to that, <laughs> I think, right? This is... This is them basically like saying like this now would be a good time to insert an ad and it's like what are you talking about? Gonna play your LP too? What's up John? What's up Landon? How's the smelly guitar? Uh, I don't know. I returned it the day before I released that first video. <laughs> it was returned before it was unboxed, on camera at least. So it showed up, um, geez, I guess it was a week ago yesterday. It was last Friday. And uh, I recorded that video on Friday. And I already knew by then. That's why I didn't uh, show the guitar uh, to anybody, because I was like, you know what, you're not keeping this thing. 
I had already figured out there's no way I was keeping it pretty pretty quickly. I figured I'd give it the weekend. And then Monday I shot the second video, and then the second the video uh, was done being recorded, and the cameras were off. I threw that thing in the back of the car and drove it right back over for a, for a refund. Now, I didn't get my shipping back, but that's normal. You know, if it was markedly different, and I have gotten my ship back, shipping back when, you know, there's been, like, undisclosed damage or something like that, or it's not exactly what they said it was going to be. But, you know, barring that situation, you know, if you just want to try it out and say, hmm, no. An at-home tryout, then you don't get your shipping back. So, you get everything back but the shipping. But that's like $22. So, not, not too bad. You know. My sound is clipping a bit. I'm, I'm not red. I'm not redlining here. You hearing the? You hearing the mic? Because I'm hearing that. Definitely. I'm hearing this a little bit. Take like a twenty-two dollar at-home tryout. And I could have kept it for uh, the 45 days, right, and got my use out of it, got my 22 bucks out of it, but I don't like doing that. And you, you run the risk of cat damage, right? I'd already made my mind up, and once that's it, it's like, just bring it right back, give them an opportunity to, you know, resell it. Why, why hold it here? Um, the only th one, I, I did wait till like the 42nd of the 45 days was a, a keyboard controller that I just wasn't sure if I... I hated it that much, but I, at the end of the day, I really did hate the keyboard feel. The rest of it was pretty robust, but that keyboard was just the worst. So mushy and crappy, I hated it. And uh, I brought it back, and it was on the counter. I'm looking at it, I'm like, it looks really good. And then I touched the guy, oh, that's right. That's right, this keyboard sucks. <laughs> I hate it. And it was the right thing to do. A little on the fence on that one. I was not on the fence on the SG. So I saw the SG, and, you know, I said, oh, you know, it's a pretty... So, you know, a lot of people were like, you know, those guitars are like seven or $800. I don't know what world you're living in. The 61 reissue was $19.99, brand new. Used to like $14.99, $15.99. That one was $12.99, so it was on the low side for a 61 reissue. Um, so I took a chance on it because I thought it looked pretty good in the, you know, in the pick. I said, oh, I'll try this out, but man, it, uh, I could, I could have even lived with it a little bit, uh, with the, with the damage, except for the, the mark on the neck. I was never getting over that. So quite frankly, I was never going to keep the guitar because that mark on the neck was just the friggin' worst. I hated that. Um, but the smell, the smell was just friggin' ungodly. It was so bad. Uh, now they say, uh, and, and I could have got some, um, what is that, naphtha, right? You, you put a little bit of that on a cloth and you can, you can take off like everything doesn't, it supposedly doesn't hurt lacquer. And then I'm thinking to myself, what are you doing? You're going to go on there, you're going to like put some naphtha on this friggin' guitar and you're going to like ruin it and you're not going to be able to get a return. This isn't your problem. You're returning the guitar. Don't try to solve a problem that isn't yours. And uh, with that, I threw it in a gig bag because I, I did want something to put it in for the for the ride back, and uh, and and brought it back and got a and got a ninety nine percent return, you know, refund. Uh, plus, it didn't come with the case, which is should have come with it, so it wasn't even on the low side. Yeah, you know, <clears throat> I started to figure out afterwards it was probably the stink of the case. You can imagine how smelly that case probably was, right? If the guitar is that bad, how bad is the case? Something with like a fur lining. Ugh. It just, they probably burned it. One one can only hope it, uh, it was burned. Um, but the guitar itself... 
really stank. I mean, like nauseatingly, like gaggingly, like 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 dry heaving, and being like, "Oh no, no, wait, dude, this is nasty." Never had a guitar that bad ever. So I have another guitar that had a kind of an odor problem, right? And that was the guitar that that great guy from I think he's in Arizona now, but. He was from California, and the guitar was out in California, and it was in like a storage locker, sort of, you know, in a humid area, like kind of close to the ocean. And so it was like covered in rust, and it was kind of musty, you know. And uh, that guitar, I was able to treat with the ozone. Again, it's probably poly, you know, versus lacquer. And uh, it cleaned up quite nicely, you know, and so did the case, actually. You know, it, it turned out pretty good. This guitar, well, it was a lot better. Still kind of stank. It probably needed the naphtha treatment to really get, like, anything even semi-decent, uh, you know, to, 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 to work with the, even the, you know, even the ozone generator. Because the ozone generator, you know, does work really well, but if there's a source of odor... Like it can only destroy it so much, right? So, like they always say, before you'd you'd run like an ozone generator, you would shampoo the rugs, you'd shampoo the upholstery, right? You do all, you you get you know you, you get it as clean as you can, and then you hit it with the with the ozone generator. So, yeah, I, I'll say one thing about it though. Um, I do like the neck on the 61. <clears throat> it's it's pretty much like this neck, right? It's a little thinner. The 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 SG that I have is very much like this, but just a little bit rumpier, a little bit chubbier on the back. And in fact, when you look up the neck profiles for the 61 Slim Taper, for the classic Slim Taper, for the SG standard, round. Right? So it does have a different neck taper on it. Um, you know, different neck carve. Uh, and I like the Slim Taper. That's what I'm figuring out. I'm figuring out I like the Slim Taper. So that's in the 60s, right? The classic. I don't think you're going to get it in the traditional, right? That's like the 50s, right? That's like the chunkiest of all the necks, I'm pretty sure. So um, <clears throat> let me show you. I was showing this to Bobby uh, the other day. Let me see if I can... What can I do right here? All right, hold on. Hold your horses. Uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right there. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, again, the one day I'm not paying attention to Guitar Center. Uh, I missed this the other day. Like, yesterday. Came in, it was gone instantly. So that's the 61 reissue. It's a good price. Came with a case. Was in really good condition. And that's the rare, what is it? I don't know if it's Inca silver. That's, that sounds like a Fender one. Vintage silver? Something silver? Gibson silver? It's friggin' silver, okay? I just thought it looked kind of cool. It had the, you know, the, the vintage uh, headstock, and it looks like the 61. It might have the round carve instead of the 61 car because they are calling it a standard but what does this guy know <laughs> right hey you can take a lot of these listings with a grain of salt so um it looks the part there is um stuff out there that says in 2014 they made a custom silver edition right and i was like damn that looks pretty good <laughs> right Need to try a Pro V. So is the Pro V the slim taper as well? Because I do like that's the seems to be the neck profile that I'm going with, like most of the time. But anyway, this what I the point of this is there's more fish in the sea. <laughs> okay? It, there's a never-ending supply of fish swimming through the stream that is guitar center used. So uh it's just a matter of time before finding uh, you know uh something else. They uh they get more guitars every day. You know, I think it kind of does look gold. I find that the silver guitars, like the 25th anniversary Strat, there's a few of them out there. They do turn gold, right? 
Doesn't silver sort of turn gold over the years? Isn't that sort of the, the transition for the paint as it yellows, right? Friggin' silver. They turn green. Nice. We'll call it. Uh, it's, it's clam. It's clam silver. Right. <laughs> oh my god. That that's give me a second. I think that's it. Wah, wah. <laughs> Unleash the fucking fury. I know my 73 strat would be perfect for that. You know, I'd have to look it up again. I'd have to see the exact notes. That's all from like a very, very hazy memory. I just remember that first riff there. It's kind of sounds, you know. And then I think it's here, right? A. I have a hard time rolling. Not very good at that. I always kind of suck at that. I hate the roll. Is there any like you don't know? You know, it, it, you know, you you learn so many of them over the years. But what it does is you you, you it's sort of like driving directions, right? You haven't driven there in a while, but as you're driving back, you're like, all oh, right, all right, then I get out. All right, then I take a left here. Because people would say, like, how do you remember the? Oh, I remember all those notes. How do you remember driving directions? Which is pretty complex. How do you remember a route after just one or two times taking it? Right? Despite a lot of complicated maneuvers. And yet, it seems pretty second nature because you've been driving a long time, right? You, you, you take it in chunks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not playing it right though. He goes, and I'm not doing that because I, I didn't learn it that way. And I'm trying to unlearn the way I learned it, and I, and, 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 and I can't do it. Right. right, I lose my rhythm. 
Um. motivate yourself to pick up the guitar and play without spending money on another instrument. Dude, you can't do that. Just let the money flow, bro. Mmm. Mmm. What am I buying today? Strat? Les Paul? SG? The world's... The world's my oyster. What? I'm de declined. What? <laughs> Don't let them tell you you're crazy. Ah. Yes, comedy and scene acting. <laughs> You want a Les Paul now? Of course you do. Everyone's getting them, bro. Just saying. I got one. That dude's got one. That other dude. You know that dude? Yup. He's got one too. We all got him. Hell, I got him just hanging off the wall. I'm just saying. Shame. Besides, misery loves company. Success fully gotten the smell out of a nitro guitar. I have not, but I haven't had too much of a problem. I have had smelly poly guitars like that Ibanez, and that's pretty. That's pretty clean now. That's actually pretty good. And actually, now that I mention it, um, that '70s classic Strat was a little rank too. Now that now that I'm thinking about it, just looking at it there, because I remember I did, I did another one. I'm trying. What was that other guitar I, I threw out in the minivan? Right, because you got to tent it, right? Or else you, how how else are you gonna get it to work? You got to tent it somehow. But I'm not setting up a tent, so I use my car as a tent, and I just put it usually in the you know front seat of the car and stick it on the console or on the dashboard. Let her rip. Close all the doors and windows, and then you know, let it go for a couple hours. And then you can just open up all the car doors and, uh, you know, air it out. And, uh, it, it, yeah, no, the, the 70 Strat. Where, again, though, poly finish. I've heard naphtha because it gets it right back down to the surface. It removes, like, smoke and grime and things like that from the surface of the, of the um, use at your own risk. I've heard it's completely safe. But I've never done it, and I don't know much about it. And I really only have like, how many? One, two, three, about a half dozen nitro guitars. All the rest of my guitars are poly. So not a ton. Hey, what's up, Quentin? Yeah, yeah, so yeah, naphtha, it's uh, the same as, uh, is it Zippo? Is it Zippo lighter fluid? It's basically alcohol, right? 
Naphthar is an alcohol. Ultraviolet in the sunlight helps too. I feel like that that will hurt the pigments though. I feel like that that'll bleach out. It's almost like too much, right? Oh really, the same thing used in dry cleaning. I did not know that. Bronson lighter fluid, it's not alcohol. Okay, so it's like a petroleum distillate. Nap is good, but I have to use it in open air. It evaporates quickly. All right. Moosing smoke. I use direct sunlight. Heard vinegar. So you got to be careful. I, I worry about organics. That's true. You don't have to worry about. It. When I had COVID, I couldn't. They had, we had, you know, we our coffee is like black as night, and it is very strong smelling. Now, when I, I didn't know I had it. The first symptoms, I lost my smell, and I thought I was like, "Did you start the coffee?" Because we made it, and sometimes you don't press the button. She's like, "Yeah," I'm like, "I don't think you did." I go in there, it's like halfway full. I'm like, "I cannot smell anything." <laughs> so bad. That lasted about. Four days, you know, five days. One cat is asleep over there. The rest are upstairs. standing a bit so what's this uh, all the change of color yeah how'd that work out reminds you all side of coffee beans so uh, they came up with a uh, uh, Kirkland as a French roast now and it's pretty friggin good <laughs> SG went back. The SG was actually gone before the first video even even launched. Um, yeah, I got it Friday. I did the um, got it Friday. I did the the first video. I shot it Friday, and then um, Monday I shot the second video. Monday morning, pretty early actually, and um, I was on my way out there. I pretty much got there. Maybe. You know, 30 minutes after they opened. And uh, uh, did the return, looked around. They had a nice um, Les Paul in there. Uh, it's a custom version just for Guitar Center, you know, sort of like a Guitar Center exclusive. Uh, it's in like a Honey Burst. And I, I, I will say it stood out. They had a wall full of Les Pauls and SGs, and it clearly stood out as the winner. You know, like one's like, wow, look at that. But look at that one, right? Like, really, really look good. But yeah, it's $2,600, bucks, 2700 $2,699, something like that. It's a lot of money for a guitar. You know, you start out at $1,299, the next thing you know, you're at three grand. It's like, whoa, whoa, slow down there. Slow down there, get. Luthier uses now the lighter fluid on all guitar finishes. Yeah, it's okay. It's 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 safe. You know, 
I just don't like to go in a, into anything blind and, and just worry about what, you know, afterwards say, oh, you know what, I probably should have looked that up on the internet first. Whatever you do, never use this on that. Oh, now you tell me. Right? Uh, yeah, I think it is. I think it's an exclusive run. I want to say it's in Honey Burst. Right? It's an exclusive uh, 50s color just for Guitar Center. So they have the 50s and the 60s. It is a 50s. That's the other kind of turn off. It's, the neck is too chunky. Not, not great. I, I do. I like the 60s. I like the slim taper. I didn't buy anything that day. No, I did leave without buying anything. They probably hate me there now. I've, I've done a couple of returns lately. But you know what? I was looking. It's like, what guitar haven't I bought from them in like the last 10 years? I pretty much buy all my guitars from them. So they, they'll they live. Gibson uses Napster themselves. Yeah. Steve, uh, what's a good neck for a Les Paul? Well, it's a matter of personal preference, but I like the, the thinner one, like this. This is the Slim Taper. This is my favorite of the Gibson necks, but some people are. Then there's uh, the, uh, the, the 50s neck, which is a, a much, you know, a chunkier neck. And then there seems to be a round shape, which is sort of in between. Not quite as thick as the, not quite as thin as this, and not quite as thick as the 50s. And then there's uh, the asymmetrical. I think that's on the modern. It's chunky on one side and thin on the other. I don't know. I personally like the 60s, which is basically anything that has the slim taper neck. Um, that's the classic. That's the 60s. That's the 61 SG. There's a few models with the slim taper neck. That's my personal one. Yeah, they, they sent me an SB. No, smelly. No, SG is correct. It stands for smelly guitar. We've been working out all the jokes this week, all the dad jokes. <laughs> Oh, do 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 do. Super Lead says he's a fan of the asymmetrical neck. I think that's what was on my last LP, though I'm not positive. I almost felt like a '50s neck. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I like the SG, uh, the black SG neck. I think I like that 61, maybe even a bit more. I did like that thin neck. I'm, I'm Count me in as a fan. Did like the feel of it. So they, let me see if I can show that to you here. Do I have it? Um, come on. Where are you? Arr, where are you? I think I found it. Hold on. All right, there. And then we go. I think I want to do the exclusives collection. The exclusives collection. Exclusively exclusive. Um, that one. So it's everything you love about the 61 but in this wonderful ebony. You know, I'll say another thing about um, the uh, the 61. I, I sort of like the use of pickup rings versus my SG standard. Because um, unlike the, you know, the flat pickguard that's in the other one, 
these are a little slanted so I feel like the pickups themselves run more evenly more parallel with the strings that's one thing I noticed on that 61 there is uh, I think an advantage to having the individual rings versus having just the single piece pick guard um, I think that is an advantage advantage 61 and then a lot of the rest is cosmetics, whether you like the half or, you know, whatever. But, um, and I think, I don't know if they still do it, but if you'll notice on that one that I had, the headstock was just a hair bigger, right? They, it's just a slightly larger headstock, I think, than the standard um, SG, you know. Oh, thanks, Mike. Look at you. And Krell Bar's here. <laughs> I like I like this yeah, I like the uh, I like that. I think it's uh, I think it's quite sporting. <laughs> and now I have four dollars to go towards it. Thank you, Michael. That's almost two hundred two dollars and fifty cents after after YouTube. I didn't send it back. I drove it back. That's the great thing about buying from Guitar Center. I don't have to box the stupid thing back up and pay for shipping and ship it back. I throw it in the back seat of my car and I drive it over to the store and I go, yeah, I'm not going with this one. is going to make money from you when you get paid yeah <laughs> what do you think i get all, when you donate money you think i get 100 percent of that i'm lucky to i'm lucky to get more than half i think they i think they clock it in at around 55 45 just so they can say well you get most of the money most being defined as 51 percent or greater <laughs> No dilithium crystal picks. I do have those ones that are nearby. My these here, uh, right there. Oh sure, the dilithium crystals. Oh yeah. They take thirty percent at last count. I don't know, man. My math, my math tells me more, <laughs> but. Exactly, which is why YouTubers switch to Patreon. That's why so many people have Patreon accounts. Because Patreon takes like 5%, a lot less. What did you miss? I played Eruption, note for note, at double speed. Dude, you should have been there. I'll never be able to do that again. And sadly, sadly, I believe the footage is lost. Sort of broke it, the stream broke, and I just got back. Yeah, exactly, with one hand, too. Which, I'm not going to lie, it's a little tricky on the tapping part. <laughs> a little tricky. But, you know. If you know, if you have the skills. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was a one off. Just one of those things. Magical moment. You know? A fleeting thing, time.
telling you, man, I, I think it's this. I'm hearing this thing moving. It's it's annoying me. Ever thought about buying Kiesel? Well, I had a uh, Carvin branded Kiesel. It was clearly made by Kiesel. And I liked it. The neck was a little chunkier than I thought it was going to be, to be honest. It was a little, a little chunkier. I would say the neck on Krellbar's uh, Jason Becker there was uh, a lot more shred-like, a lot smaller. And I would say that, and i got to think back now, I think Tone King had sort of like, um, it was like one of their entry-level sort of like just painted guitars, right? Pretty simple. Uh, something that was r relatively short money, like, you know, eleven, twelve hundred dollars $1,200, something like that. And that didn't have a very thick neck on me either. So I think maybe the guy who just ordered that guitar ordered it with the thicker neck. And I bought it used, and I was like, oh, the guitar looks great. It sounds great, but I think the neck is a little too big for me. I prefer the thinner, like, like the one Krellbar had. Had a PayPal account so people can do donate directly to you. Oh yeah, well, you can always go to. Uh, uh, I, well, it's the OG account, right? It would be Pixie Licks at at uh, Gmail dot com. I think that's on my PayPal. <laughs> Oh, you have a CT6 too? Did you ever show me that? I forget now. Did you ever bring, did you bring that up here? I don't remember it if you did. Had the Beckers long gone. It happens. Do you do YouTube full time by now? No, no, not really. Part time at best. You couldn't, I'd have to earn like a hundred times what YouTube is paying me. <laughs> no, I never brought it up, no. So uh, we had a bit of excitement this week. Cutie. That's the gray one. Caught a mouse. She, like, came, she was up on the, um, I guess that's the sill, right? Where the house meets the, meets the, uh, um, foundation, right? They call that the sill. So she was up there and she came jumping down with a live mouse in her mouth. I was like, oh. She had no idea how to kill it. And she proceeded to just torture this poor mouse. I was trying to get the mouse into like a glass, right? But the mouse like ran away, got away from me. And then I just figured I'd come down the next morning and find the mouse like dead by the food dish or in the middle of the floor, but no sign of that mouse. <laughs> no, nobody. She's, so I will say one thing, like Sweetie seriously knows how to kill a mouse. Like she's not fooling around, right? Um, she's a hunter. Cutie, you know, it was mostly raised in captivity and never really got those lessons. 
doesn't really know like what to do. She's like batting this thing around, but doesn't really know like what to do. Doesn't know how to like finish the job. And I'm pretty sure that mouse probably she met a lost interest or lost sight of the mouse, and the mouse just like crawled off somewhere to die. So we got to do a comprehensive down here and see see if we can find that friggin' mouse somewhere. <laughs> Yeah, the sill player. Yeah, the sill, right? S I S S I L L. Yeah. What's crazy is how that mouse would get. I, I the mouse like at one point went under this desk here, right? Which is very low. It's got a it's got a bottom part that's like this far off the ground, and the mouse ran under there. And I said, well, now you just lost it, you dumbass. She flattened out, got it. she flushed that mouse out. I could not believe it. Oh my God. All right, well, yeah, you're way better than I give you in, giving you credit for here. She got that mouse, that mouse ran behind an amp. She got it, she flushed it out of that amp. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> it's pretty good, pretty good. You think so? You think I'll smell it soon enough if it died? Just because it's a, it's only a mouse. It's pretty small. The only way I think I'd smell it is if like it got maggots or something like that. Then you'll smell it. All right, but yeah, you need a fly to lay maggots, right? Doesn't you know? And the way I spray around here, there's not much flying or crawling in this general vicinity. It's uh it's pretty uh, barren out there. They will smell. That mouse will fill the house, really? Well, we'll see. I have a pretty good sense of smell, so if it does show up, I'll, I'll smell it. So far, nothing. Oh, you will smell it? Oh yeah, dead mouse, all right. Maybe the mouse is like, you know, running a montage right now where it's like, you know, taking friggin' Uh, when it's like, all right, all right, calm down there, kid. Oh. oh very nice. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's, uh, that was the guitar. Can we get down here? There it is. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Mummify in the walls. There's no way that mouse was getting up into a wall here. It was gravely injured the last time I saw it. Barely able to hobble. <laughs> it probably hobbled <clears throat> down and behind something just to get away and died. There's, I doubt that thing is. <laughs> I don't think I know any mouse themes. I don't know the Mighty Mouse theme. I guess that's 
That's about it. Let's play some rat, yeah. <laughs> at full volume. So great. You know, trying to <clears throat> trying to remember the classics. C minor. Like a like what B minor? Richie Mouse Noir. <laughs> What if, what if, <laughs> who would that be? That feels like, uh, like Lynch, right? practice that that's good you know the other day <clears throat> I was so it's so been such a crazy weird summer we haven't had it's finally showing up but we haven't had like the crazy hot humid weather you know it's getting in the 80s but not in the 90s like it normally would be and then the dew points have been like in the 50s which is pretty dry normally they're like 65 and above for pretty much two straight months and we haven't had that. And the other day, the dew point was like 45. I'm like, 45 in July? Unheard of around here. So we're having a, a cool and dry, we're in a pretty much a pretty serious drought, actually. We could use some rain, but uh, it's been a bizarre year. Last year at this time, it couldn't stop raining, right? Like rain, 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 rain. And now it's just, summer's finally showing up and it's already July 16th. It's like weird, weird year. I think you're gonna run out of luck this weekend, uh, Crail Bar, uh, next, uh, like Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I think we're finally gonna get the dew points up and the, the heat finally shows up. We're gonna be in the 90s, I think, over like four straight days. But again, by the time you get to the first or second week in August, you start to see a cooling trend. 
you know? It's like the, you, you, I mean, you can still get hot weather, don't get me wrong, but it's like, overall, the trends does start to cool. June was pure rain in Switzerland. Last year, July was pure rain. I mean, just nonstop friggin' rain. It was like the weirdest July that I can remember. In fact, we had a below normal uh, temperature for July, even though June smashed through records for temperature. Uh, July was cooler than normal just because it was always raining. It covered cloud cover, like really weird. Then we had the hurricane in the fall, all that rain. God. Yeah. Yeah, I had a lot of crazy rain, so that sucked. Uh, Dallas Fort Worth is short, eight and a half inches. Yeah, we're down, I think. I think they said. Uh, Um, I think we're down four inches or something like that. And, um, I think right now, as of right now, we stand at the 13th driest year right up to this point. So that can change, right? You can have a lot of rain and then you shoot right back down the list. Right. right so you got to keep the dryness going. But right, as of right now, we're 13th for like all-time record-keeping. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's a, I think it's like four inches, right? Because we average, we're supposed to average like 2.6 inches and we'll be getting like a half an inch of rain for the whole month, right? So you start to, you start to get less and less. And so how much, you, what are you supposed to have for average rainfall and where are you? And I think we're down, I think, I thought it was four inches below normal. We're already below like the month by like, just the month of July by like an inch and a half or two inches. Super humid in Philly, that's coming here. That's coming here. That's punching up from the Southwest and Philly is Southwest. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> not a, I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan of the humidity. But like I said, I am happy that it's not showing up until the middle of July. Because some years it shows up in like, you know, May. And June, July, and August are all just miserably hot and humid. And like, you know, well, there's always hazy hot and humid, right? So I don't have any of that here. No, we're, we've been... It's been pretty good. We're going to get a little bit of it, and then even then, it's not going to be too kooky. A little tropical. Ten degrees in snow, same here. I'm a winter guy. I like the shadows. You know, the low sun. Uh, I like it. Oh, let me hear people up there. I wouldn't mind the summer if it wasn't so friggin' humid. When I was in Germany, man, it was it was 85 degrees and a dew point of 35. I'd take that all summer. The problem is the dew point of like 70, 72, friggin' gross. South Carolina, yeah. Yeah, you're down in the soup, too. All those, uh, anything south of Washington, 
you know, anything south of D.C., oh, it's so humid. And D.C. is wicked humid. We had an office in D.C. I'd have to go there once in a while. Just gross. Just disgustingly humid down there. I don't mind a 36 inch snowstorm, that's nothing. Rip right through that with the snowblower. Good to see you here, Dave. A pool would be nice, yeah. My sister has a pool, it's, a, it's an enormous undertaking to keep it going. At this, at this stage, she won't have it open till like August 15th. Be closing it two weeks later. Phoenix is nice and dry. Yeah, 15% humidity, yeah, pretty dry. But it is 112 degrees Fahrenheit. That's eh, a little hot. There's gotta be dry, and cool. Where's that? Lake Tahoe? <clears throat> Was it Reno? But then you gotta live in Reno. I'm trying to think who's where is it <clears throat> where is it dry and cool? Northern Cali. <laughs> well maybe I have to go to Oregon. No one here in Oregon even knows what the dew point is, it never matters here. Well, that's that's what I need. I need a place where they're like, do what? <laughs> dew point. Do what to a point? No, it's it, not D-O-D-E-W. Now, East, if you look, if you look on pretty much any land mass, the West is always drier than the East for the most part. So like if you look go to Costa Rica, the dry side of Costa Rica is the west coast and the moist and the rainy side of Costa Rica is the east coast. Right? Kind of the same with the United States, right? Starting at about the Mississippi, uh, it starts to get increasingly arid as you go to the west and increasingly humid as you go to the east, especially the southeast. I think if you, if you, you know, if you really want to be like in a dry, arid climate, you have to be somewhat west in, in, in the continent. Last time you were in Oregon, weed was 50 bucks an ounce. Well, that's half of what our going rate is. <laughs> 25%. Yeah, that's pretty good. I think right now you're seeing mostly between like 18 and like 30, 31 is probably the high side. But here's what they do now. It seems like if you go to anything, like all the the big like, um, uh, you know, like commercial places, they just look up what the tack is, right, what the total active content is, and they... Um, they just put it into like, oh, these. This is like the private reserve, right? And they just they jack up the price. So the the good place is like that Mim place. It's all it's all the same price no matter what it is. And so just get what you like. Hawaii is the wettest state. Yeah, I would think so. It's surrounded by water and it's pretty small. 77 Fahrenheit in Orange County. Maybe the earth spin has big effect on the west side of the land mass. It, it seems to be that way. Although weather travels from west to east, go figure. Right. You would you would think it would not, but it it seems to. Oh, 
Well, you know what? That might be, is that the Coriolis effect? Right? So if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, you travel clockwise, it's counterclockwise, and if you're in the Southern, you go clockwise, and that would put the, right, that would put the uh, weather, that would, that would explain the weather. I don't know, though. Magnets, it's all magnets. <laughs> the colonitis effect. What's a nor'easter? A nor'easter is a rare storm. You gotta remember, low pressure spins counterclockwise, high pressure spins clockwise. So, um, is low pressure moves up, uh, usually what happens is it builds up um, sometimes in the west and then it sort of goes down across the southern states, works its way out to the water and then comes up the, the east coast, right? Sometimes it builds in the Gulf of Mexico and sort of comes up, kind of weird. Sometimes a piece of energy comes up out of the Gulf and sits down in like Georgia or something like that. And then something comes out of the Midwest with its own energy, picks it up, and then it gets once it gets out into sea, um, there's a rapid drop in pressure. Bombogenesis. And um, that causes uh, stronger winds, faster rotation. Right, you call bombing out. And uh, of course the rotation is counterclockwise. So as you work, that storm works its way up the, the coast, heading up from south to north, uh, the winds come out of the northeast. Hence, a nor'easter. And they're pretty powerful storms. They're pretty strong. Nor'easters are a, a very typical pattern that occurs a few times a year. We had one once, not in the winter, but like sort of like in the spring we might have had a summer nor'easter once that was just brutal they were talking like it was gonna they're like you know we could get 50 60 mile an hour winds we had 90 mile an hour winds like practically hurricane force it was crazy i had a massive flood down here that day it dumped like in a crazy amount of water. The amount of water it can pick up, the energy it can just lift out of the ocean and just turn that into friggin' rain. Drop like 10 inches of rain in a day. They're wicked strong. Remember, wicked is an adverb, not an adjective. It's not a wicked storm. It's a wicked awesome storm. It's a wicked strong storm. It's, it was a, like a wicked deadly storm. Our afternoon sun shower has turned into a level three kill storm. Weather channel now, first time, bro. Well, welcome to the channel. First night. Perfect storm. Did they ever find the fishing pole? You know, I don't know. I don't know. That was based on a true story. And that was, a, that was actually, yeah, that was a perfect storm. That was the same thing, right? They had energy coming out of the northwest. They had energy coming out of the south. They meet up and combine, bomb out, turn into this rapidly intensifying storm. And those poor guys were just stuck out there. It's hard to defeat like 100 foot swells. I like the European model too. I think it's more accurate. In fact, I gotta. It's 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 that time of year that I I usually go on a Sharknado, you know, binging spree. Watch uh. Watch pretty much all. Is it six of them or five of them? I forget now. I think it's six. The best is three and four. Those are the two best. Yeah, I haven't had... I really haven't had a, a flooding down here in a little bit. 
we have to we have to um, see if that we had a test of it with that hurricane and nothing came above the floor it was shocking and it was it was working man that thing was pumping like every few seconds so um, I don't know I don't know we, we haven't had enough rain in a single sitting to really test it It's an absolute most of course. Nothing's off the table. Actually, a lot's off the table. <laughs> people, people come here for entertainment. Zombie tidal wave. I don't remember that. Is that a movie? The best is um, Zombievers. Zombiever? They go to the they go to like up to Beaver Lake, and it's all these like you know, young twenty young college coeds, and uh, there are it, of course <clears throat> they're zombie beavers. So, they're out swimming, and, uh, you know, they're attacked by zombie beavers. I mean, what's, what's not, what's so hard to understand? <laughs> yeah, zombie beavers, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, that's my favorite. Oh, speaking of, did I mention that last week? I forget, did I talk about the Three Stooges movie? And, uh, what was on recently? God, I love that. And what was the other one that was on? Kill all monsters, destroy all monsters. All right, was it with Pookie? God, I love a good B movie. Probably mentioned that last week. Killer Clowns from Outer Space. That, that was on recently. Pretty good. You know, your classic, your classic B, classic B movie. Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Looks like they spent a lot of money on the uh, on the clown costumes that were that were just they they never do anything, right? Maybe the eyes movie. The eyes maybe that was about it. Ever see Black Sheep? No, no. One of my favorite movies, though, is, uh, again, if you just want to talk about not just uh, B movies, but uh, a spoof on B movies is um, Black Dynamite. Black Dynamite! What has he done? What did you miss? Earlier, I did a one-handed version of Eruption at double speed. It was incredible. A one-off, never to be repeated. Yeah, Kentucky Fried Movie again. The War of the Gargantuous. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now you're talking. Huckaroo like Ponzi. Now you're talking. <laughs> Godzilla versus Megalod, uh, Megalon. Uh, that, I think, was on. It might have, and, and Mechagodzilla might have been on, too. 
Oh, yeah, Toxic Avenger. And I'm trying to think of, uh, yeah, Dolomite is my name. Oh, God. That dude, man. I love friggin'. That is such a great movie. It's Bucky. Where is Bucky? And what has he done? God, I can, that movie, Black Dynamite, one of the greatest movies ever. Uh, so the guy who wrote and stars in Black Dynamite, which is a comedy, to spoof on black exploitation movies of the 70s, um, like Shaft, um, uh, that's the dude who played Spawn, which I guess I never put it together because he was in such heavy makeup during Spawn. Remember that Spawn movie in the 90s? Right? Uh, Wanda! Probably his best line in the whole movie. And um, you got to hand it to him. I I, th- I thought, I mean, for a, uh, a pilot project, I thought Black Dynamite was a friggin' fantastic movie. A really good, it's a satire, and it works. It's a satire on B-movies. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to get you, sucker. I, I think that's Chris Rock's first ever appearance, right? Isn't he the kid who goes to the rib place to buy the ribs? He just wants to buy one rib. And then he needs to change for 100. He OG'd, man. He over gold. <laughs> Steve made a Steve, you damn right, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I, yeah. Was that yeah, was it Michael J. White? Was that it? I again I I I'm, I'm terrible with that stuff. I don't really know. How much for one rib? No, how many ribs are in? He goes, how much for an order of ribs? He's like, six bucks. He's like, and how much, how many ribs come in? He goes, about a half dozen. He goes, all right, I'll take one. He's like, one order of ribs. He goes, no, 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 one rib. He goes, one rib? He goes, yeah, one rib. He goes, one rib. The guy's like, one rib? He's like, all right, that'll be a dollar. He goes, I got change for a hundred. Pulls out a giant roll. So I'm going to say, I'm going to get you, sucker. I saw that in the theater. And I got to say, that had to be, that had to be 86, right? Was it 87? Was it 88? I feel like it was 86, so maybe... So that came after the first, really the first of that series, which is, um, oh, what the hell was that first one? What was the first one? Robert Townsend. Uh, oh, God, it's killing me here. Sucker was 88, so what was 86, I'm thinking? Must have been... Uh, Hollywood Shuffle. That's what I'm thinking of, Hollywood Shuffle. So it was Hollywood Shuffle 86, and because it's a lot of the same crew, quite frankly, from Hollywood Shuffle, right? The upcoming Nope movie looks kind of wacky. Well, I will say this. I think Jordan Peele's kicking ass. I, I thought his first two movies were really good. <laughs> Kind of scary, shockingly, like good. I was like, "Oh wow, this, this guy's good." So we'll see. We'll see what he does with with this. Right? He's taking on. He's sort of taking on the 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 UFO, right? The the sci-fi alien abduction, you know, sort of theme. We'll see what he does with it. But uh, yeah, so he did Get Out. And that was his first. Which was, uh, I thought, a great movie. It's shoestring budget, too, right? They made that movie for like $5 million. And then, um, and then, 
Us, which of course had a much bigger budget, but again, a very scary movie. You didn't know where that thing was going. And then, and there's so many great scenes, right? And Us, oh my God, like, find yourself in here, right, in the mirror room and all this. Oh my God, it's so good. He's really good. I think he's a, a fantastic director, you know. Um, his shot selection, all the little things, the writing. That dude, man, I think he's pretty damn good. Yeah, so the, the and so nope, right? So the first one was Get Out, the second one was Us, and now his third one is Nope. And I think he wrote and directed all three, right? I don't think he's just the director. I think he's also the writer, or at least one of the writers. You know? I was pimp of the year. Yeah, you won it with a poem. It's, let me lay this on you. It's called... I, I, I am plucking this out here. That bitch better have my money, right? That's how he wins Pimp of the Year, right? With the, the talent contest, he reads a poem. That bitch better have my money. Not half, not some, but all of my cash. <laughs> well, she's gonna find my foot straight up her ass. Oh God. And I, that's Tommy Davidson, right? Is it Tommy Davidson that plays who uh, what was his name? Who was Pimp of the Year again? He had a great name. Right? It's the guy or was it the guy who played Huggy Bear? Is it the guy who played Huggy Bear? It might have been the guy who played Huggy Bear. And the and the actual I'm trying to think now. Maybe that was that. Oh, maybe that wasn't Tommy Davidson. Now that I think about it, I think it was the dude who played Huggy, right? And the and the and the in Beretta, right? Because the movie came out in '88. He'd still be around, right? Still be acting, working. Antonio Fargus? Yeah, is that it? Yeah, you might be right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's Starsky and Hutch. Starsky and Hutch. Right, not Beretta. Starsky and Hutch. Right, 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 right. I'm getting my I'm getting my informants mixed up. <laughs> yeah, I always had an informant. <laughs> Yeah, that's him. Is that it? Was that him? See? I knew it. I knew it. I'm saying it. I remember because, you know. And of course he's got the he's got the shoes with the with the um with the goldfish in them. But then of course he gets out of jail and the, the fish are dead, but they're still in the shoes and he's trying to walk down the street being all cool and everyone's laughing at him and the you know, the shoes break. <laughs> yeah, the fall from grace. That was pimp of the year. That bitch but have my money. Not half, not some, but all of my cash. <laughs> A dramatic reading. It was Rooster on Starsky, and it was Huggy Bear on... Right. Well, Rooster's gonna crow, right? 
God, did you, did you come up with a worse name? Rooster. They named him Mouse because he liked to squeak. They called him Pig because he liked to squeal. <laughs> the worst hackneyed writing. Yeah, see, I trust Krellbar. I trust Krellbar on this. His um, his uh, pop culture knowledge is uh, uh, usually uh, fairly accurate. I hold my pick like I think a lot of people hold their pick, and that's the, the crossover. Right? Like, I'm not trying to go like this and have my fingers facing the same way. Actually, right? So, I, I, I tell you, here's what you do. You take your hand and you make a light fist. Like that. See that? Almost like the, like I'm telling you something kind of fist, right? Very, very, you know, light fist. And then you just, you stick the pick in. Right, and then I'll get it to. I like it where this top seam. You can see that. Uh, no, you can't really see that. Is up against this the first. Right, right, right in there. That's where I like to. Right, and so it's sort of like that. And then usually these fingers are out. Like when I watch myself on video, like a lot of times I'll have my hand in like this, but. When I look at myself on video, th these three fingers are out usually. They're out like that. Working as stabilizing bars, I'm sure. Something. Getting them out of the way. God, I love the top of this guitar. You know what? I'm in a painted guitar. That's what I've realized. That's another thing I didn't like about the SG. I didn't like the natural top. I think if I'm going to get another SG, I'm going to get one in ebony or white or, quite frankly, I thought that silver was quite sporting. Maybe just ebony. Why overthink it? Exactly, Blackie Flawless. Bit of a misnomer. In fact, they sent this outside of the case, and the back has some light scratches, the kind of scratches you would get trying to box it up. It's like if they, I wonder if it wouldn't be in better shape. I mean, it's not that the back is all scratched up, but there's some light scratches back there. You probably really can't even see them, but they're there, trust me, they're there. <laughs> and you wonder if those wouldn't even be there. If they just shipped it in the friggin' case. God, it's annoying. <laughs> Yankees four Red Sox one. So you say this, so you say there's a chance. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks, Steven. Shock me.
I left the curtain up so the cat could look out. Get it, did D. She's finally up. She's been sleeping for a while. Sometimes with the with the right muting, really really chugga chugs it. it gives it the old chugga chugga. Chug, 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 chuggeroo. You think the voice volume's a little low? I turn I literally turned it up. I literally turned the voice volume up. Sounds killer. All right. Sounded good tonight. I've been, you know, I've been liking this guitar. Don't, don't underestimate the, a good inspiration, you know, with the, with the guitar. You know, it's, this is like one of those guitars that, you know, it sits on the shelf most of the time because I keep it in the case. And it's a little bit more of a hassle to take it out and, you know, versus one that's just sitting right there on a stand, you know, or hanging on the wall. So it's good, it's good, good to take it out, give it a little, little run through. I do like it too. I think it's got uh, it's got a good look to it. Oh, you know what I wanted to show you before I forget. I meant to wear it, but um, I suppose I could put it on. But should I? It's eight thirty. Should I do this? All right, hold on. This 
is art. You know? Like a freaking saran wrap. Like a fucking sausage casing here. And you know why? Because they have to use a certain material to get the graphics to look really good. You see what I'm saying? Or else they, you know what I'm saying? They don't take. So it has to be a... I might have a jealous cat here. <laughs> I just love the... <laughs> so, um, if you don't know these guys, this is... Yes, these are the same people that... Hello. These are the same people that Henning uses. Um, they reached out to me and said, uh, Hey, um, you know, if you, if you like the... Uh, if you like the shirts, you know, we could send you some shirts. And I was like, cool. And they're like, what do you want? I said, send anything cat related. And they sent over about a, Jesus, probably like, could be eight or 10 different shirts, all cat related. Sadly, most of them have been stolen by the rest of my family. My wife saw them and was like, oh my God, my daughter. They're like, I love this. I love this. They, so... I, it took me a little while to even find this one. I'm like, can you, can I get one of my friggin' cat shirts back? I called my wife. I'm like, where, they went down the beach. I'm like, where's one of my cat shirts? She's like, oh, I'm wearing one and Catherine's wearing the other one. Uh, uh, did you check on the table? <laughs> so I was like, all right, okay. I was like, all right. So I found this one. I figured I'd throw it on. The other one that was up there is a sweatshirt. I, I was already sweating. And I was like, no, 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 I can't. I got to. I can't do that. Anyway, um, I don't really have an affiliate with them or anything like that. It's not a paid promotion or anything. But um, I did get a, a, a code. I did get a code out of them uh, for a percentage off. I think it's SFB15. So if you ever want to get anything over there, they already discount pretty heavy. But I think it's even on top of that. So whatever the price you see, I think it's like another 15% off. So. If you're, if you're ever in the mood for a crazy cat shirt, I will roll out the cat shirts in the coming weeks and show you the, the various ones I have. And of course, they're, they're double-sided because of course they are. And, uh, and there you go. Ed Axman is right. They do run small. This is like the largest one they make, and I still think it's a little small. So, um, buy oversized. Buy oversized. Now, granted, on with on my kids, they look enormous because my kids are much smaller. Uh, more like a night shirt. But uh, I would get big. If you take a 2X, I'd get a 3X. You know? If you take a large, I'd get a 2X. They do run small because of the because of the material. Because of this, this material is like so like, um, I don't know what it is. I don't know what. It's very soft. It's like a microfiber. Maybe it's microfiber. Because it is incredibly soft, whatever it is. And that would explain maybe their ability to get the, the you know, the, the graphic on there. Which, you know, I'm not going to lie. Pretty sick graphics, bro. <laughs> <laughs> polyester spandex it kind of feels like that it, it, they, it, it does feel like a but it's so soft it does not feel like spandex right which always feels like to me it feels like a little rougher to my hand so maybe it's just a newer tech maybe it is that but it's just a newer tech to make it softer because my kids and my wife said the same thing she's like wow these are like really soft I said I think they're microfiber <laughs> Ah, 
I don't think they do tall. I would just get bigger. How do you buy a shirt? Um, maybe uh, Ben or Terry can find. Um, I think it's is it M is it M R G U G U? Is it Mister Gugu? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what it is. Hold on, I'll give you a. Uh, I'll throw. Um, I'll throw it in here. Uh, do, 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 do. There she goes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, can I go here? And men, men oversized shirts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They have all kinds of ones. My kids were cringing at some of them. They have a lot of drug ones that they were cringing at. And they're like, this is so cringe. I said, you know, sometimes they try a little hard. I'll, I'll give you that. <laughs> sometimes they try way too hard. But a lot of them are kind of funny, especially the cat ones. You know. Uh, do they have a search engine? No, they do. Let me see if I can just do a quick search. Yeah, 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 yeah. Here we go. All right, cat ones. I got one of these. This is the one I was looking for. This is the one I wanted to wear. But uh, my wife had taken it. <laughs> I think I got one of these. I, got, I think I got a few. I think I got one of these. Got one of those. That's already been stolen from me. My son, daughter had that on the other day. Uh, I don't think one of those. But I got a few of them. Yeah, this is the one I'm wearing. Right. The UFO shirt. Um, I think I got one of these. It's funny because it's like I, I called up, you know, like this one. And my son is like, that's my favorite shirt. And then I called up this one. He's like, no, 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 no. That's my favorite shirt. And then I brought this one up, which is the one I'm wearing. He's like, no, 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 no. Forget those. That's my favorite shirt. <laughs> I was like, I know. I know. Anyway. <laughs> I need a Hello Kitty. There's probably a little um Hello Kitty is a is a big old brand though. <sighs> Gotta be careful. I did use Stinky for the screenshot. Stinky's long gone though. On to on to cleaner pastures, I hope. Actually, it was gone in one day, and I said, oh my god, somebody bought it because it was back up today. Back up. <laughs> My daughter, my daughter will like these shirts. Yeah, but if she's, you know, if she's young, you got to be careful. You got to, you got to scream it a little bit because they do have some ones that I don't think are, are appropriate. You got to be careful. They're, they're, they can get a little, a little uncool. So just make sure you're, you know, because my kids were looking through and they were like, "What the hell is this?" I said, "You just listen. They're trying real hard. Okay, don't worry about it." But the cat ones are awesome. I love the cat ones. I can do cat ones all day. Cat bird, you see that? That's a cat bird. Deal with it. I think I got one of these. We got a couple of these. I don't have any of the pants though. I'm not, I'm not much of a pants guy. I usually don't try to wear pants much. <laughs> anyway. Anyway, you get the idea. Cats, cats. <laughs> I was like, just send or <clears throat> send over anything cat related, and they and they did. Oh, I got a cat bumping my leg right now. Are you 
Dart is 21, then it's fine. But there are some inappropriate shirts, I, I feel. You know, if you have younger kids, I wouldn't let, you know what I'm saying? Just get the shirts and don't show them the website. Because there's a lot of drug reference ones that are just, again, they're cringy and they're trying hard. But there's a, there's plenty that are hilarious and really awesome. Like like the ones that Henning gets. Henning gets a lot of cool ones. So I started with the started with the cats, and we'll see. We'll go from there. There's, they have plenty of cat ones to go with, and I just said, you know what? I'm going for it. Look at that thing. Nice. <laughs> Yeah, Hello Kitty's, I feel like it's been around for 25 years or so, maybe longer. The 90s? When did Hello Kitty come out? The 90s? <laughs> Got to fix dinner now. We hang it. Probably not. I was up super early this morning. Alien cat duction. <laughs> I was up super early. So close. Think this guy pooped today? I can only wear it if I actually have, though. Skull and flowers. I'll take a look. They have a lot. They have a ton of stuff. Oh, yeah, 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 right. It's calling flowers. Right, right. Yeah. That one's actually not bad either. It's like a bad movie poster. They were in no one was ready for Skullberg. Yeah, lots of skulls. Scullies. Oh yeah. I, I, I kind of like the I like that shirt though. That's pretty cool. I think Henny's worn one of these. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, he are. Well, maybe for Halloween. No promises. It's not like I'm talking to my kids. I don't think that I, I did take a look for guitar and music and wasn't finding a lot. That's when I switched to cats. Let me see if they have a music one. That's a good question. Great question. Yeah, not really. Not really. Uh, no, how about guitar? Probably just going to be that same one. Nothing, nothing found. I don't even have a guitar as a search, as a search string.
They do have, they can't say Lego, but they do have ones that are, you know, very Lego-like. They're connecting, they're connecting uh, blocks. <laughs> Exactly, hashtag Skullberg. No one was ready for Skullberg. Yeah, geez, we got about 12 minutes to go, huh? We're going to get a high quality Slayer hoodie. Might want to start with their official website. Paul. You trim and shape your beard yourself. Oh yeah. Yeah, this is no it's not a pro job. That's just me with a, you know one of those beard trimmer thingies. Yeah. Something else I wanted to mention this week. I always forget. Should write some notes down sometime. Get some more guitars coming. I don't know when they're going to get here. But I should have some guitars coming. Uh, who knows when they'll get here, though? What else? I feel like there was something else that came up this week, and I was going to mention that during the show. Can't think of what it was. I did have cats growing up. Was Slayer the band that wore a yellow and black stripe? No, that was Striper. Just remember, if, you, if they wore stripes, it's Striper. They look like bumblebees. I oh, you got a couple coming as well. Look at you. Nice. I'm trying to keep from buying more picks. It's, it's hard. I am uh, I am fully addicted. Get that SG you always wanted? Well, I do have an SG. I did, I did buy that SG. The Ebony one. I got that one last year. You mean the 61? I don't know that I always wanted it. It was more of an impulse buy, quite frankly. You have $150 in uh, Guitar Center credit that expires tonight. Oh, you get online and use it, dude. Find something. I've always worn glasses. I'm myopic. That means I'm nearsighted. the best budget way to play something like a zoom multi effects live I tried running into PA but its tones didn't sound quite as good as when creating through the headphones um, did you have the speaker simulator on just make sure when you're running out you had the cabs on 
that's a common problem is that when you run out, the cabs are turned off because they assume you're running into an amp. Just make sure that you had those cabs on. Assuming that's on and you did have cabs going, then, um, yeah, uh, the only thing you can really do is sort of like, it's probably just a little too crispy. I got to think. Usually it's the high end that throws it off. With your speaker. You say, is that for my speaker? Did you miss anything? Yeah, dude, I played Eruption with one hand earlier. At double speed. Unfortunately, the footage was lost. It'll never be recreated. Damn it! <laughs> it could happen. That double speeded single handed eruption was killer, I know. Yep. And I broke a string and changed it while playing. Yep. My. It, it, it almost appeared as if I was frozen at one point because the riff, it, it approached it as like the speed of light and my own personal time slows down. Besides, you can only listen to it at the speed of sound, which is, you know, a lot less. So, uh, hence the delay. Yeah, you t exactly. I had my new single, Make Like a Banana and Split. Hold on, I, I actually, I have the, I got the cover art for that. Just one second here. Where is it? Oh, yeah, right here. Right there, hold on. That's the cover art. You know, I actually had a banana split the other day. First time I've had a banana split and I can't remember. They had a new ice cream place and I was like, you know what? I went up. The Sundays were seven ninety five. A banana split was seven ninety five. I said, "I'll just go with the banana split." And I will say, to her credit, she said, "You know, when when it, when someone says, you know, when you order a banana split, and they go, yeah, how do you want that made?' No, no, bro, quit your job now. When I ordered that one, she said, uh, she goes, you just want it the traditional way? I said, yeah. She says, okay. Perfect. A perfect, perfect banana split. Had it all correct. I was like, yes. See? Training. Thank you. Didn't that? No. Nope. Just make it the way it's supposed to be made. And she did. Perfectly. You know? No, I didn't go soft serve. They, they 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 do offer that. You can either go soft serve or you can go um, regular ice cream. I went regular ice cream. You know, like if I went to like Crescent Ridge or Richardson's or something like that. You know, you want to you want the you want it. Yeah. Oh God, it was so good. It was so friggin' good. I haven't had a banana split. I can't remember the last time I had one. God, it's like. Maybe in my 20s. I was like, damn it, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. It was good. It was really good. Yeah. 
da, da, da. Yeah, regular ice cream is the way to go. You know, there is something to be said for the soft serve. You know, I won't totally trash it, but it's not the same with the strawberry. Right? When you get to the strawberry ice cream, then, the, the, you know, and then it just feels like sort of like Nestle Quick mixed in with, you know, vanilla ice cream. It's not, the chocolates are not bad. And of course, the vanilla is fine. But when they get to the strawberry, it's not quite the same as when you get like real ice cream uh, instead of the soft serve. You know, not quite as good, I think. That was a long time ago, but thanks for the Amplitude and Audio Face Interface. Yeah, that was a long time ago. I think that was 2015? I should make an update. It's been seven years now. I need to make an updated one. I got the diabetes, so no banana splits. Yeah, I know. I probably, I probably shouldn't have them either. Two minute warning, damn. Thank you, Ben. Uh, you go back to three coffees a day. Yeah, I'm only, well, I was on like six coffees a day, and now I have about three coffees a day, maybe two, two to three tops, three tops. But I was drinking a lot. I was drinking like a half dozen coffees a day. It was pretty bad. Oh, nice. All right, dudes. Well, it's 8.59. I should start wrapping this up. We did start a little early. Forget that. So, um... You know, of course, uh, don't forget to tune in to Ben Coombs' show on Sunday night. That's Ben Coombs on Sunday night uh, on his channel. And uh, there you go. Thanks to everyone for hanging out. Super extra thanks to anyone who contributed. Really appreciate that. And, of course, uh, fist bump, uh, bro fist to my mod squad. Hashtag Mod Squad. And uh, I'll see you guys maybe this week. I don't know when those guitars are going to get here. If they get here early enough in the week, I'll, I'll do a, a video during the week. I, I should be here. You, YouTube has just suggested I run an ad. <laughs> well, they're relentless. They're relentless. Hashtag no ads. All right, dudes. I will, um, oh, and just one other thing I wanted to mention, um, there's a total douche bot out there, like, throwing up, um, like, you've won, and it has my, my picture in there, and it's got a WhatsApp number, I know people know that that's garbage, and they don't do it, but please, it, that is garbage, that has nothing to do with me, I've been trying to wipe them out, but they really suck, they throw up, like, a dozen, like, in a second, great, oh, thanks, Brian, oh, thank you, man. Much appreciated. Very much appreciated. Oh, speaker, I didn't even know you were here. Good to see you, man. So, if you ever see, if anyone ever told you you won, and there's like a what, I don't even have a WhatsApp account. So, it's definitely not me. Okay? Definitely not me. So, it's been annoying. That's only shown up in the last couple of weeks. And every time I post a video now, I get a bunch of people replying to comments saying, Hey, man, thanks for commenting on my video. You know what? I have a free prize for you. It's, like, annoying. And um, and they make the account just ever so different. So even when I block them, it's, like, ten messages from, like, ten different accounts. It really is annoying. But what can you do? I'm, other than just tell you, ignore that stuff. And thanks again, Brian. I was very much appreciated at the very end there. Um, so, uh, yeah, the thing is, is that I can block them. If I report them as spam, sometimes they don't even take the message down. I don't see it anymore. But if I look at it on another account, it's still there. It's like duly noted. It's like, no, listen, that's why I have to block them or I have to just delete them all. I usually just block them. That seems to work, but only so far. Oh, thank you, Sassy Cat. Very much appreciated. So it's just, it's, it's annoying, it, you know, it's just, it's all just a big scam, 
Uh, I, you know, I don't... You didn't win anything. I certainly didn't win anything through WhatsApp. All right, so despite it saying, like, SFB and despite it having my, my logo that they obviously just stole, uh, it definitely isn't me. So, there you go. You, you didn't win a cat shirt. Not yet, anyway. All right, there you go, dudes. Thanks so much for hanging out. I'll see you guys in a week. Until then, have a wonderful week. And uh, as always, rock on. Later.